What's up guys, it's Matt from Cornelius Creations. I wanted to quickly pop on here and talk about a subject that some would consider to be boring, but it is well needed, laser engraving safety. I am going to make this as simple and educating as I can without being boring, so hang out with me for a little bit while we cover some important information you need to know. The biggest safety concern people think about when getting a laser engraver is, well, you guessed it, fire risks. Whenever a laser is used for cutting or engraving materials, it is essential to grasp that it emits an intense beam of focused light onto a very tiny area. This concentrated beam generates extremely high temperatures, which could potentially ignite certain materials. So it's evident that some level of responsibility is necessary when operating any type of a laser engraving machine. Fires from laser engravers can start due to different factors, but let's cover the most common. Under operator error, we have number one, incorrect settings. Anytime you are engraving or cutting material, you need a reference point to draw from. This is why I run a test file on virtually every material so I can see the sweet spot to set my laser at. Now, some laser software does come with presets like Xtools Creative Space, which is really nice. But with whatever software you use, be sure not to abuse the power of your laser and have a point of reference you start from. And number two, dust and debris. Over time, dust and debris can accumulate on the lens and around the laser engraving machine. When the laser beam interacts with this buildup, it can heat up and potentially ignite, leading to a fire. So be sure to carefully clean the laser lens and the engraving beds of any debris. I personally clean my engraving bed after every engraving and the laser lens every four through five projects depending on the intensity. Now number three, people and pets in the area. When I am laser engraving, I usually shut off my room to keep my pets and any children away to avoid any type of accidents, especially with my open diode units. If a laser engraver is running, it will arouse the curiosity of anyone and anything in the house, I promise. So please be responsible with this step. Number four, failing to monitor the engraving process. This could fit into any category, but do not leave your laser alone while using it, even if you feel confident. In. You may have nailed in the perfect settings, but there could be some unknown variable at play you are not aware of. At the end of the day, you are still operating hardware with software. Pay attention and be in the same room while you engrave. Now these points may be common sense to you, but I promise it's easy to compromise on them when you are in the moment working on a project. Moving on to safety topic number two, safety accessories. Number one, safety glasses rated for lasers. Using a laser engraver without the right eye protection is, well, stupid. Staring at a laser engraving can cause lasting burns because of the harmful rays it emits. Laser glasses protect your eyes by blocking these harmful light wavelengths. To be honest with you guys, I learned about the harm lasers could do 15 years ago when I was ordering these crazy powerful class three handheld laser pointers from China that could burn through stuff. Actually, on my first YouTube channel, I made content over handheld lasers before I deleted it. To give you guys an idea, this is what eye damage looked like from a guy who had a high powered laser pointer shown in his eyes. You see all these gray spots? This was damage to the rods and cones in his eyes, which resulted in many blind spots. I saw this in a safety article online about handheld laser pointers, and I wanted to show you guys. Now, will a laser engraver do this type of damage? I don't think so, but over time, the rays from a laser engraver can burn your eyes. I'll show you this to put safety in perspective for you. Bad things can happen. Wear glasses rated for the type of laser engraver you were using. Depending on the style of lasers, some units may be enclosed or open. Enclosed lasers will usually have protective glass that will block the harmful rays coming from that specific wavelength. But when operating open diode units like this one behind me, you will definitely need glasses rated for lasers. Number two, enclosures. If you have an open diode laser like the one behind me, an optional accessory is an enclosure like this one. This will protect your eyes as well as contain all the smoke so it won't be going everywhere. This enclosure from Extol I use is fire retardant, so that's a huge plus. While we are on the topic of enclosures, let's go to number three, proper ventilation. Proper ventilation for laser engravers is crucial because it helps remove fumes and smoke from the area. It also reduces the risk of fires and ensures consistent laser performance by dissipating excess heat. 
Overall, proper ventilation is essential for operator safety, equipment longevity, and really the quality of laser engraving results. And by the way, there are optional smoke purifiers out there if you are limited in space in an enclosed room. I use smoke purifiers all the time with my P2 and F1 lasers as well as my diode enclosure. And number four, fire safety set. I am not sure about other brands, but X-Tool has a fire safety set with auto flame detection, which is compatible with a diode enclosure, as well as a few other enclosed laser units that X-Tool makes. This works by using automatic sensors to detect any possible flames and releasing non-harmful CO2 gas to extinguish the fire. For the peace of mind that this gives, I could see this being worth it for a lot of people. And number five, using an air assist. And let me tell you guys, this is probably my favorite accessory. Using an air assist is a must in my opinion. This accessory works by blowing out smoke and small debris from the cutting area, which helps with the cleaner cuts and engraving while making your project less prone to a fire. And number six, honeycomb grids. This honeycomb pattern of the grid allows for efficient airflow beneath the material while cutting. This also helps to remove smoke, fumes, and debris during the laser cutting process. This may not sound too impressive since I am running through this fast, but I promise you, you need one of these if you are going to be doing any type of cutting with your laser engraver. Now to sum all of this up, I feel like I covered a lot of basic points you should be aware of. As long as you go into laser engraving with being self-aware, I think it will stop a lot of problems from occurring. I encourage you to read your laser manuals before operating and watch more videos like this one that will help you. Speaking of laser engraving safety, I have something cool I want to show you. Hold on. Are you guys ready? I am so stinking excited to show you guys this. I know this is just a box because I can't show you the product yet, but this is the brand new S1 laser engraver and cutter from x -Tool. And what makes this so special, I can't share all of the information with you, but it is the world's first enclosed 40 watt diode engraver and cutter. I can't share a lot with you guys, but let me share just a few things that this brand new S1 has. So apart from this being the world's first 40 watt enclosed diode laser, another feature that this has is a brand new positioning method. This doesn't have a camera, but they're saying that it works better than the camera, that it's more precise and it supports curved surface engraving. I'm super excited to show you guys that in another video. This also has a dynamic focus system in it. A full scene autofocus system is what X-Tool is calling this. It's supposed to be really good. So another feature here is the accessories that the S1 supports. And this is reminding me of my P2CO2 laser over there. This can accommodate the riser base, which means you can engrave some pretty large items and it accommodates the automatic conveyor feeder. That's insane. So you can like make a huge sign with this diode laser. It's pretty crazy. And this also has interchangeable laser modules. So just like with the x D1 Pro units, they had an infrared module, a 10, 20, and 40 watt. And I'm sure this is gonna have the same, but I will tell you this, x -Tool told me when they built this S1 laser, that they centered it around the safety of the user. So if you are getting another laser engraver or it's gonna be your first one, this one might be the one to look at. So I'm going to make a unbiased review and demo video of this laser coming out soon. So you guys be sure to watch out for that. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.